Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the introductory chapter to the entire Harry Potter story, The Philosopher's Stone. Now, let me just start off by saying that The Philosopher's Stone isn't everyone's favourite. Some felt that it was too juvenile, too innocent. But I for one am a huge fan of the first film and the immense nostalgia that it brings. The Philosopher's Stone was the preliminary introduction and gateway to the wizarding world on the big screen, and for that, it will forever remain in my heart. But no film production goes without its fair share of mistakes, prop failures, misread lines, bloopers. These are all elements of a production, they're an inevitability. However, what I want to discuss today are those elements of filmmaking that slipped through the cracks, the one that made it to the final cut. I'm of course talking about movie mistakes. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, though a masterpiece, is certainly not without its fair share of mistakes, and today I wanted to share 20 of them with you all. These mistakes come in many forms, simple oversights, visible equipment, crew, and continuity errors. If you like the style of video, I can do it for all of the films. Just leave a comment letting me know down below. Let's get started. Kicking things off, we're brought to the Quidditch pitch, where Harry is hanging on to his jinxed Nimbus 2000 for dear life. This scene occurs just after Hermione sets Snape's cloak on fire, and here, if we look closely, we can actually see the wire rods taped to the broomstick, leading to underneath both of Harry's sleeves. Next up, we have another mistake in the same Quidditch scene where Harry is upright and trying his best to stay on his unruly broomstick. Just before panning to this still, we see Hermione say to Ron, leave it to me. With the close-up on Harry, we can actually see a seat underneath his broomstick, which made it more comfortable for the actors to sit on. Next up, we're brought to one of the opening sequences at the zoo. At the zoo, Dudley is being unruly and harassing the snake, also pushing Harry aside. This leads to a disgruntled Harry removing the glass between Dudley and the snake. In this first still, we can see here that the snake actually disappears. However, once Dudley has actually fallen in, we can see the snake reappear in the frame. Next up, we're brought to the girl's lavatory during the fated troll attack. Here we have young Hermione trying to get away from the troll, backing towards the cubicle doors. The issue here, the cubicle door seems to go all the way to the ground. However, in the next scene, Hermione can be seen scrambling underneath the cubicles, which shouldn't be possible. Here we have a scene where the trio have made it past Fluffy, the Devil's Snare, and in this moment, the keys. Harry throws Hermione a key, which she then catches and runs over to the door with. It's at this point that we can see electrical cable hanging in plain sight in the background that wasn't visible in previous shots. This is an interesting one. When Quirrell enters the Great Hall and tells everyone that there's a troll in the dungeon, Dumbledore proceeds to shout, Silence, followed by, Teachers will follow me to the dungeons. At this point, it pans to a shot of McGonagall and some candles that are very clearly hanging via visible wires. At the start of term feast, just after being sorted into Gryffindor, Harry sits down on Ron's side of the table. However, very shortly after, the feast appears on the table, and at this point, Harry is sitting opposite Ron, next to Percy and Hermione. In this scene, Petunia is bringing Dudley over to his vast pile of presents, and perhaps one of the most blatant equipment-related blunders in the film, a black microphone wire can be seen in plain sight around Petunia's neck, not to be confused with her apron strings. In this scene, the trio are just vacating the room where they first encountered Fluffy. After running away, they decide to head back to the Gryffindor Tower, and it's at this point that we can see a crew member's feet underneath the door behind them. This is another weird one that could be up for debate. Here we can see Hermione's hair in Madame Hooch's class, with some sort of crimp in it. However, in the following scene, and in all subsequent scenes, Hermione's hair appears to be completely straight. Just after being knocked off of the knight's horse in the chess challenge, which is protecting the stone, Ron Weasley can be seen falling to the ground. It's in this moment that, if you look closely, you can see black protective gear underneath his clothing. In this scene, which occurs just after Dumbledore and Harry have a discussion about the Mirror of Erised, 
Harry is walking in the snow outside with Hedwig on his arm. When the shot zooms into Harry with Hedwig, we can see a Jess around Hedwig's leg, that is, a strap tethering Hedwig to Harry's sleeve. However, in the very next shot, this Jess is no longer there. In this scene, which occurs just after the trio escaped Fluffy and the Devil's Snare, the trio are faced with a room full of keys and a floating broomstick. When Ron and Hermione walk away to the door on the other side of the room, we can see Harry standing next to the broom, and if we look very closely, we can see a bar clearly supporting the floating object. Back to the troll scene, here we can see an overhead shot of Harry clinging on for dear life as he grabs the troll's club. The scene looks fine at first glance, but if we look closely, we can actually see some of the crew's equipment in the bottom left corner. Back to Fluffy, in this scene, the trio have just entered Fluffy's quarters, where the giant three-headed dog is asleep. However, the trio suddenly come to the realization that Fluffy has woken up and a giant glob of slobber lands on Ron. What's interesting here, however, is that in the very next scene, only moments later, Ron is lying in the devil's snare with a completely dry shirt. In this scene, Hagrid has just brought Harry with him to Gringotts to visit Harry's vault and conduct some of Dumbledore's business. The issue here is the envelope. The envelope we see here is creased, with the bow tied a particular way. However, in the very next moment, as Hagrid passes the letter over, the envelope is suddenly completely fine, with no creases, and the bow position appears to have shifted. This is a good one. Back at the zoo, just after Dudley falls into the snake pit, we can see what looks to be a stick prodding the snake into action. In the very next moment, the stick is gone. In fact, we can actually see it begin to leave the frame. This stick actually belonged to one of the crew members who was poking the snake in order to make it move. In this scene, back at the Quidditch pitch, there are actually quite a few mistakes going on throughout. The main ones, however, are these wires that are attached to these brooms. The wires in question are attached to the broom handle between their legs and extend down to a clamped loop around their feet. In this scene, which occurs just after Harry has retrieved the Philosopher's Stone, we see Harry crash and fall to the stairs after Voldemort's soul flies through him. What should be noted here, however, is A, that he's unconscious, and B, the way that he lands. Moments later, in a follow-up scene, Harry's arm position is completely different and moved way too much for someone that was unconscious. I enjoy this one quite a lot as it's a favorite scene of mine, one of many. Here we can see Harry carefully taking notes in Snape's class, with careful, neat, and most importantly, small handwriting. However, in the following shot, we get a glance of Harry's notebook from afar, and the writing looks nothing like what Harry had written down in the previous frame. And there you have it, 20 mistakes in the first installment of Harry Potter. Do you want me to do more of these for the other films? If so, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry.